Welcome back everybody, my name is Dustin and this is going to be the second devlog for the game that I'm currently working on, The Lost Children. If you haven't seen the first devlog, it kind of talks about what I'm doing and kind of the goals for the game and you can check that out right here, okay? I wasn't feeling well last week so no videos came out last week, however, I did do a lot of work on the game, well at least I think it was a lot, it felt like a lot of work. So The Lost Children is going to be a JRPG style game and I'm still really working on the mechanics. Most of my time last week was spent on the menu system. There's still a lot to do with the menu. UI takes a lot of time, especially with this menu that I'm working on. There's items, magic, equipment, status, other things like that that we want to show. We want to show the avatars, we want to show the health and all of that, the MP. So it's actually taking a lot of time. And since I'm doing it all in C++, any small change, I have to wait for a full compile in order for that to take effect. I do enjoy using C++, but the scripting does help. When you're doing little small changes, like moving things around in the UI, it really helps uh, when you can just use the scripting. But since I can't use Lua right now, C++ is doing the job, and that's fine for now. So I was able to clean up the equipment menu a lot and also get the item menu working. And now we can actually use items, and it opens up a target state, which has all your players, and you can choose which one that you want to use the item on. So let's quickly start the game up and I can show you where my progress is so far. If you remember, I'm redoing the Scion 2D game engine to make it so I can use it with Imscripten and Wasm so we can run it in the browser. And like I said before, I had to change all my Lua scripting stuff to C++ since I can't get Lua to work. However, so this is what I'm using right now. This is what you see open. This is the EM command prompt. So what this will do is it actually sets up all the required environment for you that you need to run the EM SDK correctly. So I've just done a recent build and we do uh, ignore these warnings like right now I just started adding in the controller and stuff like that so I'm not actually using it and this one don't worry about that right now. I should You shouldn't return uh, a local temporary object. It's doing what I need right now I'll make changes later okay. Alright so let's run it. So in order to run it we want to go EM run and index.html because that's what I called it and we're running it. Like I showed in the previous video, this is just like a splash screen we made and we can just get it to run. And this is your start screen. It doesn't do anything yet, but eventually it will. So now we have this. So the first thing we did was work on the menu a lot. So here in the items, I can actually use items now. So when you click on an item, it will open up a new target select screen and you can choose someone to use it on and it can use it and once you run out of items it automatically brings you back to the next side. Also here if you don't need it it won't let you use it so it brings a member back to life so what it's going to do is check to see if the enemy is dead. So see that's the cancel sound it doesn't work right so let's go back and same like so say we use this here as soon as it's used automatically it goes back as soon as you're, it's empty and here you, we have an antidote so I won't work on them. I did poison this guy here. You can't see anything on it. That's what I mean. Like eventually in the UI here, I'm going to want to have like a poison icon or something like that. And then you can use it. See it got cured. And see it's cured now. So you can't use it on him anymore. What I'm using for that here. Here, let's take a look, little look at the code for that. All right. So over here in, I have a little helpers file here. Uh, we basically have two different things. We have status ailments and status effects. And all we're using is bitmaps here. So we're using masks and what I'm using is an int for this. So this allows me to set specific bits and that's what I need to do. So say we're poisoned, well that bit will get set. And we set that here. So in our actor class we have this status ailment here. So if we come up here we have these two flags. So what this does is check to see which flags are set. So here we go to add ailment. So what it does is it checks to see if the bit is set and then it orders it together. So if it's already set, it doesn't need to set it again is what it's doing. So if the bit set is this here. So it's checking here. All it's doing is some bitwise operations. 
So the same with remove ailment. It's gonna check to see if the bit is not set, it's just gonna leave. Then it has to get the bit and we want to change its state. And that's what this is doing here. I was also able to get the collisions working now. So now if we walk over here and collide, we're not going through it anymore. So that's great. And I, did, I also did get the triggers to work. I only have this one house working right now. So what it does, it triggers you, takes you over to this area. So you can leave. So the way I did that is you end up, you emit an event and you trigger an action. So what happens here, if we go to our trigger system, this is another problem I have. Because I'm using make files, I'm so used to using Visual Studio where I can set up everything nice and I'm not used to make files. So I just have everything all in one, one folder. So I need to figure out how to use make files a bit better because I haven't, I'm not, I can get it to work if I have it all in one, but I should be able to folder them out and make separate make files for each one. But this is how I have it for now and it's working fine. So if we go to the trigger system here. So what happens is you'll get an event, a collision event, and then you'll have your triggers. So what we're doing is we're checking to see which entity has the trigger. And then right here, if this entity is the trigger and this entity is the player, then we're gonna have different actions that we need it to do. You see here we're using STD get. That's because our action params is actually a variant. So if we go here, we're using the STD variant and it's only gonna hold one particular type. And the type that we're gonna be holding is gonna be based on the action type itself. So if we come here, we have different, we also have different types of triggers. We have on enter, on exit, on use, and then no type. But our different action types, right now we only have, we're only gonna have the two for now, but there's gonna be more. We're just gonna add more actions there as we need. And then our variant will only hold one that's what it's going to hold. So and it's going to be based on the action param that it's holding. So then if we go back into our trigger system, so that's what it's doing. So if the action type is teleport, well, it should only have teleport params. So it automatically goes STD get, gets our params, and then it sends those params into our teleport function right here. So we go into our teleport function. This is just an action. So our actions, and we'll put all our action functions here that we need, and then we'll have our teleport function. And what it's doing is, pushes the new fade state, so to fade out the state, stops animations, so you're not doing any more animations, then it moves the player, and then it pushes the state again to go the other way. So you fade in, so this is fade out, but I'm not fading out, I'm just automatically going into a black screen, and then this one's fade out. Yeah, so there's still so much to do. What I'm finding right now is, I'm good at the programming side, I can get the programming to work, it's making the levels, and getting the art and doing these different things, adding in the sounds, UI placement, and making it fun to play. That's the hard part. But programming, I like it, because you can always find an answer, you can look around, try different things. It's more of an iterative approach, where when it comes to making the levels, I'm so slow at it, and uh, I find it takes up a lot of my time. There's still lots of things that I need to do anyway. I want to actually get the scene change to work, that's gonna matter. And I also wanna have another trigger by next week. I wanna have another trigger that will, if you step onto the trigger, cause again, we have three different types of triggers, on enter, on exit, and on use. So if you step onto it, you wanna be able to like, if you hit uh, the action button, you wanna be able to trigger something like uh, talking to a person or opening up a chest or something like that. I think I can get that implemented by next week. Also, I wanna be able to have where we can change the camera. So the camera needs to have limits, and we wanna be able to change those limits. And we already have the code there to do it. We just have to add in those functions to actually change them based on a trigger. So we should, I'm gonna go do that next week. Also, I've been working on the next video for the, if you're also watching the Game Engine series that I'm working on, the next video for that is gonna be done this week. Uh, I've been working on finishing up the text batch renderer. And let's take a little look at what I've got here. Basically, I'm using the same text batch renderer that we're gonna be using in the Scion 2D videos. I'll show you right here. So if we go to text batch renderer, there's a lot to this one here. So here, so we're creating our create batches, we're actually doing a bit more than before. We wanna be able to, we don't set like a wrap, so it'll automatically wrap around. And that's what this is. So we're chunking the text into different lines so we can wrap it around and then we're sending this creating our vertices here and sending those to our 
draw calls down here. But we'll get into that in the next video sometime this week. Maybe tomorrow, probably, I'm shooting for Friday to have that one in, all right? So I'm gonna keep working on the game. It's going really well. That's it for this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Hey, let me know what you think uh, down below. And I should have a little demo. Uh, I'll get you guys the URL so you can try it out because you can just play it in the browser. And that's what's cool about the, using in scripting. And it automatically changes it to WASM and JavaScript for us. And I can still program in C++, which I like to do. So, all right, you guys take it easy.